So, I thought this would be kind of fun as, like, a do a story idea of, like, a good old-fashioned Superman-Batman story. And it's just kind of not so much like a world ending, this is a dark crisis or a whatever. It's just a fun Superman-Batman story involving the entire Superman and Batman family. Um, so let's get started. I thought this would be a fun story called The, Ri the uh, Rise of the House of L. And this story is what go what happens is that Superman and Batman have gone missing. Like, the uh, Martian Manhunter, like, gives the news to, uh, to Dick. He gives it to uh, Nightwing, and he also gives the message to uh, Supergirl. Like, there's the first two he finds, and he's like, uh, Kara, Richard, I kind of need your help here. So the two show up, and, Mar and Martian Manhunter explains... Listen, uh, Clark and Bruce went missing on a League mission, but we do have, like, traces to find them, so, uh, we could probably, we can hand you what data we have, and you got, and we'll help, and you guys can, you know, form search parties from there. So, yeah, the team, so the Super family, the Superman family and the Batman family unite to find these little clues to where Superman and Batman went off to. And of course everyone pairs off, like, uh, of course Damien and John, and Jonathan, team up he's like and Jonathan's all excited he's like yeah of course we were gonna hang out and Damien's like yeah I'm cool <laughs> so Damien and John already like being like the world's next finest they pla blast off to their place um, you have Kara and Batgirl you know Barbara and, and uh, Kara team up they team up to go off on their little mission um, Steel teams up with Tim, with, uh, Tim Fox the uh, future state Batman he teams up with him you also have Crypto and Ace. They go off on an adventure. Um, uh, you have, like, of course, Lois and Catwoman. They team up on it and go on an adventure together. Uh, meanwhile, Dick, I want to have, like, these two fun scenes where, where Jimmy Olsen is, like, standing around. And he's like, what do I do with my life? Uh, am I supposed to be teaming up with somebody? And then Nightwing shows up. Because <laughs> Nightwing and Jimmy Olsen would be a, just a fun pairing together of having those two go on an adventure. Um... And then you also have Jason, who's just kind of, like, Jason's just sitting around in Gotham, like, waiting for his ally to show up. And he thinks it's Bizarro. Um, he thinks it's going to be Bizarro. But then the Eradicator shows up, and he's like, of course I get the fucking robot. Me, as for, um, uh, where is Bizarro? Because I've always had this thing, like, in this little continuity, is like, Bizarro's kind of, like, begrudgingly let into the family. Like, he's just kind of, like a member of the super family so yeah they kind of accept him because he's just he's not really evil bizarro the best kind of bizarro is not really evil bizarro it's more like he's kind of like the karloff um frankenstein where he's just kind of like a child in a huge body in a huge super powerful body and in here he te uh, bizarro teams up with man bat kirk langstrom and like i said jason teams up with uh, the eradicator um, and everyone, and, uh, Superboy, Connor Kent, teams up with Tim Drake, and they just go off on their, and they just all go off on these little adventures. So, for each adventure, um, there's kind of something different about each one, like, uh, when Jimmy Olsen and, uh, Jimmy Olsen and Nightwing are on their little quest, they go, they have to infiltrate Cobra, um, they just have, yeah, they gotta infiltrate Cobra. Not that Cobra, there's a DC Cobra, it's more of a cult. They have to infiltrate it, and Jimmy Olsen and Nightwing are kind of, like, talking, like, he's like, you know, we've never really hung out before. Weird, right? And he's like, well, you're, you you take pictures, and I get my ass beat in Bloodhaven. It's, it, you know, it's, it, we don't really hang out. <laughs> and also, why did you, get, like, and Nightwing's like, no offense, but why did you get, like, why did you get brought in here? And he's like, I've got a really good mind, and I, and I got turtle powers. And he's referring to Turtle Boy. That's a whole thing in DC Comics. That's a line you could literally use for DC Comics in general. It's, that's a thing that happened in DC. <laughs> so, um, um, what was, what was I? So Nightwing and him infiltrate the Cobra Cult, get the information they need of what happened. They thought they were following the lead that maybe the Cobra Cult was the one were the ones who captured, kidnapped Superman and Batman. They weren't. Meanwhile, you have Selina and Lois have to infiltrate a uh, the Condock Embassy. They have to literally like infiltrate the Condock. They're following another lead where it's following the Con where they have to break into the U the Condock Embassy in Washington D.C. 
Now, Lois goes in as, like, a reporter doing a story on Kondok, and um, meanwhile, Selena like, breaks in, and the two have this conversation, which, again, I wish we got more of. I would be totally down for a Lois Lane Catwoman story. And more or less, that story of those two, like, I had the idea where they're kind of just shit-talking their, uh, like, Batman and Superman, and it's like, oh, yeah, Clark does this when he sleeps, and, Br and Selena's like, that's not, and Bruce does this, and he talks in his sleep. Like, I just wanted to have them, like, have, like, gossip between the two as they're both kind of talking. And I also would love to have in the story that the person who helped Lois get into the Condock Embassy was uh, Steve. It was uh, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, you know, Steve Trevor, you know, uh, Wonder Woman's uh, boyfriend. And he, they're, like, having this gossip, and he's helping them. And he's like, uh, and, and they look at him and, like, don't you have anything to say about Diana, Steve? And he's like, I do, but, like... I, I don't want to sound sexist. Like, he's, he's just kind of, like, awkward because he's, like... He's literally hearing all this talk about Superman and Batman, and here he is, like, having dirt on Wonder Woman, but he's like, I don't want to sound sexist. <laughs> and, and Selena's like, that's a good point. Um, of course, they run into um, con the guards uh, in the embassy when they find out Catwoman's behind this kind of break-in. Following that, we have... Um, we have a Durlin, the alien shapeshifters, the Durlins, who are uh, kind of like making a meat, uh, like kind of taking over like a meat packaging plant that su that Damien and John bust. They have uh, there's another one with Eradicator and Night and Red Hood, who the two of them have to stop a kind of super a supervillain gladiatory ring. And the two kind of bond because they're both kind of like the out uh, the outliers of the team. They're really much like, and uh, Jason's like making all these jokes and like quips and whatever. And meanwhile, Eradicator is like, mm, I don't compute this emotion, but I understand what it is like to be treated as the outlier. He like Eradicator and, and Jason kind of agree on that, even though Eradicator doesn't have any emotions. He does understand what it, he does have that feeling of. Well, Clark, you know, Kal El doesn't really. Uh, he doesn't. He sees me as like a black sheep for all the stuff I did when I try when I tried to be him. Um, you have uh, Steel and Fox. Um, they have to. Uh, they end up getting into a, into a battle with a group of extre of like right wing extremists. <laughs> they they bond they bond over that. Uh, Tim and Connor team up on like an adventure that it deals with um, like shape shifting demons that take the form of demonic clowns. <laughs> just like fun comic stories. Like that's the whole point of this is that it's just fun comic stories. Um, in fact, like uh, Crypto and Ace team up to take on Lex Luthor's cat. <laughs> yeah, he does have a cat. So. Um, they take on Luthor's cat, who's teamed up with... Uh, who, yeah, they take on Luthor's cat. Uh, they also fight... Uh, what, was, what was the other ones? Like, Kara and... Yeah, Kara and Barbara team up to take on a tag team of Livewire and Poison Ivy. So that's the whole adventure there. And by the end of it, all these clues lead to one place. It's the Fortress of Solitude. So everyone... Oh yeah, I forgot. The Man Bat and Bizarro one is them fighting like a guy who's creating monsters like he's he's creating like uh he's, he's using like hugo strange's monster serum and the two of them team up to stop him um but anyway getting back to the point is that when everything is said and done all the little clues they found uh the two the uh, the two families find their way to the fortress of solitude and find out clark and bruce have been fine the whole time what happened was that Martian Manhunter made up the story because um, this is supposed to be like a huge event for, and Superman basically says, I've been, I've been meaning to do this for a long time, but there was one thing that really pushed me over the edge of doing this, and he explains that two weeks ago, Bruce brought him to the Batcave and gave him all ac like wrote a program and gave him all access. Yeah. So, like, Bruce wrote a uh, code for Superman to you to give uh, get total access of the Bat computer, and Clark's like, "Okay, why would you do that?" And he's like, "Well, I've been thinking about it, and essentially, what it is is that um, 
you're right. Like you, I always talk about having contingencies for you, but everyone talks about not having contingencies for me. When in reality, you, Clark, you are my contingency. So if I ever, if I ever went rogue, I know that you would be the right person to stop me. So Batman gives Superman control over the Bat computer if that if that protocol ever needs to happen, and in turn, like he. Like that proves the ultimate trust of Br- between Bruce and Clark. So Clark gets the idea to officially like do this ritual, this old Kryptonian like right uh, right of adoption. And essentially, what he does is that he finds out that there it, it like if someone wants to be adopted in the family, the whole family gets adopted too. So of course, Bruce has got a big family, whether he likes it or not. And Clark. They have to go like a t- like a, st- a story like a journey of self discovery among one another, and yeah, that was the whole point of the adventures. Not only to stop all the crime going on, but also like you guys would find common ground amongst one another, and that was the whole point. So by the end of it, uh, the Jor El program basically says the House of Wayne is now part of the House of L. Rise, Bruce Wayne L. You are now Bruce Wayne L. Um, so that's the story right there. I just thought it'd be a fun, like, adorable, like, hey, let's do a fun story where Superman, where the two guys who consider themselves brothers are become brothers. <laughs> yeah. So there, so there you go, guys. You tell me in the comments below. What did you guys think of this? Like it, hate it. Um, and as always, if you haven't already, hit the link below to my Patreon. Other than that, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.